yo what is going on guys it's your boy Sesso here bring guys yet another illustrated tutorial here today bring you guys a video on how to create your own cool text logos now the only one other tutorial i had about text logos was like three years ago and it was like eh, you know it was one of those kind of like oh god i need to really fix this so i'm gonna bring you guys another new one updated one today now there isn't a sketching part how i usually go about like doing logos and stuff because it's fun it's entertaining and whatnot it's just kind of different right however i don't want i don't have like a sketching process video but i do have some sketches here that kind of explain in the two simplest ways that I would go about the process of actually making an illustration uh, il uh, excuse me a text logo right so uh, as you can see here I call this like transition letters right so if I'm doing text logos you're always gonna find yourself whatever really whatever letters there are there are gonna be letters for like a fact uh, that have transitioned. These are just examples of some. There's probably like every letter can be transitioned. That's probably the creative part from, you know, actually creating your own text logo and stuff like that. So I have an example here. I'll just use like a brush and I'll just make it like pink. Um, TP, right? This is like a T, right? Right here. And then I kind of transition the actual tail of the T. Uh, to like be a P right here, you know, it's, it's very simple. I'm like, I know it's very simple to like see it and visualize and stuff like that. I just want to make sure you guys understand it. So that's what is right there. TP, it'll have like a nice, uh, an HN right here. So this is a little bit of a slant. This is on a larger slant to actually, uh, I guess, transits to an N, right? So of course this right here is supposed to be a GA. Um, so this is like a G right here, right? And then you kind of sort of got the A going here. This is a little more creative, a little more thought process into it, or maybe a little more suggestive and not actually completely like visualized and just read exactly the way it's supposed to be read immediately. Cause that's not all the times, that's not all the times where logos are, right? Sometimes they can be suggestions. Um, This is NK, which I think I'm gonna be doing for the actual video here today. So this is like the N right here. And then this right, this little line right here kind of indicates the K, but I put this little line right here to kind of be like, okay, that's for sure now a K. But I think I'm gonna do the NK for the actual example. Of course, you can see them here. This is another ED right here, right? Um, and then OE over here. So these are just some, some transition letters that can also be transitioned to, uh, to like mo even more, right? It can just be whatever. And that's kind of the whole point of like making a text logo. It's like, uh, you know, what ways can you make the, the letter transition or what ways can you suggest letters? And that's like my next little thing over here is like uh, representations or just suggestions or kind of like not having it be exactly what someone would would want a fe to look like that's what this is supposed to be right here this is supposed to be fe if you can't kind of see it it's a little it's just a little fun right so uh the f is located right here of course right i just have mine with no line here but i put the extra line that would usually be right here on the outside so it has a little further out like going further out so this is like the f and then the e is pretty much suggested with this little line right here because basically this would be the fe however there's just no line going through here to say hey this is the e right here so this is this is like suggestive right so it's just not all the time like uh this is exactly what the letter is and you need to figure it out or you need to know what it is automatically it's it's a little bit suggestive it's a little more um playful it's a little more fun a little more creative a little more thought process going in to like kind of like you know try to figure out what it is rather than just know automatically however it's always best to figure out um what the letters are or whatever a logo is but it could also be a symbol it has to, it doesn't have to always be a representation of the actual thing and that doesn't make any sense i mean like it doesn't always have to be a complete you know you always don't have to read it automatically right so over here is an ad right so i pretty much suggested it with these little curves here and like right here going down here and this little line going through i could probably continue this line a little further to more suggestive that is it that it's an a because right now you probably think it's an f going backwards right which is also a thing you can make letters go backwards who said you can't and then right here it's supposed to be a d so i kind of suggested it by going over here having this go over like, over there and like i have the dotted lines here to kind of like indicate what you'll be filling in if someone was looking at it so it could either go as an a d or realistically it could also look like an fl if you think about it right and it's just like one of those things and this is the last one i had over here is it's an ea so um pretty much this one is just like uh you know it's like there's the e right here but this line is backwards right i just put it backwards because it's fun it's whatever and then i just kind of suggested that it can be put forward and then i put this the the middle uh e kind of line going through make that the a little kind of thing going through like the a of the middle of the a and then have that be ea right so the whole point of this like me like quickly going over this is kind of like just making sure you guys understand that it's not always about kind of you know making your letters look exactly the way it's supposed to be like or excuse me making your letters be completely visible at all times and no creative thought go into it because why not like it's, it's a little bit of the fun that actually goes into uh into designing so of course 
every time I try to make a new logo tutorial, I try my hardest and my best to like give you guys new information, new kind of inspiration, just to kind of like go through, be like, hey, that's a pretty good idea. Maybe I should try this instead of you know always sticking this way. So just thinking of other different ways to do something, go about something, will definitely help you guys out in variations, creativity, all that cool stuff. So that was my little quick, fun little introduction right there of how to like actually create a nice little text logo through the sketching part. That's what I would probably usually have if I was um. Or if I did like a sketching, you know, part, I would probably sketch these things out and say the same exact thing. However, why not just have it done already and just be ready to go really quickly. So, okay, sweet. So 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below. So do not forget, we're going to go ahead and get this thing going and uh, let's go ahead and start this thing off. All right, so let's get this thing going. So pretty much the one thing I'm going to start off with for sure is basically the little, the little kind of. I guess shape to start off with so basically I made a nice little shape by using the M tool of course the rectangle tool and kind of just went ahead and kind of made a nice little size rectangle that's gonna be like the the width and everything of my actual letter concept my logo concept my text logo um realistically you want to do this only because like of course we're not using a font we're of course creating our own letters and such and like I said before I think I'm gonna be using the example of the NK and I'm probably gonna add an E at the end of it so for me this will be the thickness of the actual letter concept and it would look okay uh, if you made it a little skinnier however you will find yourself like suggesting that oh I should have made my shape a little thinner thicker or whatever so you might have to do multiples of it um either way this is the shape I'm gonna be using for today and basically what I'm gonna be able to do is I'll just like either just hold alt right and then just throw it in to my actual canvas It's outside my canvas right now because I put it over there I can put it inside I just put it outside because I don't want it in my way so I hold alt it makes the duplicate tool uh, kind of like arise and I can just simply move the actual shape right over it'll make a duplicate for me and then basically this is what I'll be using to make sure I suggest and or excuse me keep my same exact width throughout the entire thing so that was that a voice crack um throughout the entire thing so uh yeah that's what I'll be doing so let's go ahead and get this thing going like I said before I will be using this as an example so I can keep this here for why not reasons um so let's go ahead and do that so pretty much what I have going on here is like uh n so I guess I'll start off with the N, right? So I'm going to put it on a little bit of a slant. We'll just say like, mm, like also if you guys did not know, if you hold shift, it will rotate it in like perfect, like, uh, I guess 15 intervals. Um, so if you guys want to do that, you guys can. However, I don't want to have it on this large of a slant. I mean, I could, um, um, like a little less. How about like that? That's okay. Now, there's two things you can do. If you guys want to, this is kind of like the thing I've learned by just, you know, kind of, of course, messing around and illustrating myself. Now, if you guys want to, if you guys are creating your own letters and your own letter concept and stuff like that, what you want to do is make sure that your points are hitting another point. So you want to make sure, uh, what I like to do is I hold Alt, I select the shape that I'm, I want to move, right? That makes me, that allows me to select the entire, uh, all the actual, all four or however many pen, uh, pen tool points there are. If I just clicked on it regularly, you guys probably do that as well. I just like clicking on it with Alt because why not? and also feel like if I'm using is it the selection tool yeah and you can use the selection tool direct selection tool but I like to use the direct selection tool just because I can select each point if I need to and move them if I want to however in this case we're not gonna be needing to do that but anyway just keep in mind every time you're gonna be doing this make sure that you select the point right and you want to move it all the way over just like so right and then you can basically see you can, you can feel a snap you can feel it snap you can see it snap and you'll say that is where the points are overlapping and that is where for sure I want to have my actual uh, shape be interacted or excuse me uh, intercepted so if you guys did not know already if you guys select two different shapes or highlight them like this or like I like to do is hold shift and just click on both of them just like so it'll select both of them and then you can use a shape builder tool now shift M is the shape builder tool and as you can see it's located right over here the shape builder tool if you guys hold alt you'll see next to your mouse it turns plus to minus of course plus meaning it will detach whatever like you see these little four quadrants right there's like one two three four five um five different shapes now that you know are created because these two rectangles are, are i guess intercrossing so if you press plus or you, if you just didn't hold anything you just selected one thing with the uh mouse having a plus near it it'll basically make this into its own little shape and you can move it if you guys wish to um or if you hold alt you'll see a minus and it'll get rid of them so if I just get rid of these two things, that can be the top of my end where I kind of have a point and then, you know, so on and so forth if I continue at going that way and going that route. However, I like to do something like this. I like to go ahead and take another shape. Let's go ahead and take another shape. And we're going to hold shift so I can make sure I rotate it on a perfect axis so it's perfectly horizontal. And I'm going to take this point here and I'm going to throw it right on this point over here. Now, you can either just like make another shape like so 
drag it all, shift M, shape builder tool, and get rid of it with holding alt. You can do that, or you can just be human and kind of just move it by selecting the points, just moving it over, holding alt if you guys want to. There we go. So this will do is you'll see when I go ahead and uh, like add this one over here, another shape, and we'll put it on like a nice, a nice angle. I think that's a pretty good angle, right? And then also the reason why I said to hold alt is because I like to select the point and move the point on its own. I don't like usually selecting the shape and then selecting the point. So if you guys select the point just with the direct selection tool right here, like A on your keyboard, I always use that for my uh, actual thing, like go-to kind of movement selection tool. So when I click on the point and try to move it, it only moved that one point. But if I do click on it with using Alt, it'll select all the points, and that way I can just keep my mouse where it needs to be and then move it. So that's why I said hold Alt. I don't know if I clarified that, but now it looks kind of cooler because I kind of have a nice flat top in the end. So it'll go up and then have a nice little flat top and then go down. And then to add the flat top again, all I got to do is take this rectangle you had before. And then just put it on that point. And then I can take this over here now. And we'll add this to this point right here. And then we have our nice little N. Now, for me, I can see that this needs to be fixed because this is not lined up at all. It looks really weird right now. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to drag these two points a little further out. And you'll see where the actual uh, shape was prior to it. So if you just want to drag it out kind of keep it in the same exact uh, place, you can do that as well. Because I want to drag this out because I want to cut this perfectly. Because if I try to cut it right now, and the way I would do that is I would use the rectangle tool. And I would cut this so it's flat, perfectly matches up. But if I tried to use the shape builder tool, it will it will cut this out the way I want it to. However, it's still going to be empty space right here. It's going to look awkward. I want to make sure I have all this entire thing cut out where it's flat right on the bottom. So the way I would do that is take these two points like you saw me just do, right? Shift click on them, drag them out, make sure you're still lined up perfectly. And then I'll shift click or shift M and then use the actual shape builder tool and then cut it out just like so because that is how I want to have it right same thing with the top here i can do the same exact thing let's just drag it up a little bit take a nice little rectangle tool make sure it's on the line shape builder tool and then cut it out so now we have our n our n is located right here the n is right here as well so now i gotta add the k to it so it's kind of like a little fun part where you kind of say hey what i want to add this k at so i'm gonna go ahead and kind of put it on a uh further down i don't know this i'm getting picky now um that's not terrible. It's not a terrible like angle. Can I have it K? I don't really know. I want a little bit more. Sure, that'll do. I'm gonna make sure I extend this out a little bit more because I have to cut it out the bottom. So I'm gonna do that again, just like so. Make sure this is all cut out nice, just like that. And I can also just shape build a tool and cut this part out right here as well because I don't need that there. So now I have my N and then my suggested K right here. Over here in my little sketch, I do have a little line going down here. I think I'm going to add that in just because. So I'm going to add it in. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually just going to use my shape. This is where you can also use shape builder tool. If you have a certain angle you kind of want to follow. Because right now in my head, I just suggested to myself that I wanted to. Is this, by the way, like a perfect? It is. Okay. I just suggest, suggested to myself that I kind of want to have it do something like this. Right? I want to have a little, I want it to, the actual little part right here, this little line to be a little skinnier, or excuse me, a little, uh, thi or not thinner, up more, right? That's, I don't know which other way I'm going to say that. Bring it up more, and then make sure that this, I want to kind of have something like this going on here, but it follows the same angle as this. Now, I almost got completely lucky and almost did it perfectly by eye. However, the way I was just about to do it was, I almost said shish kebab, shish kebab to do it. Um, the way I was just about to do it was... Kind of make sure that's like that, even though it probably doesn't matter. However, if I just shape build a tool or select these two points right here. So this one right here where it has that angle that I need. And then make sure I kind of have my other shape inter uh, intersecting that shape here. So pressing shift on my keyboard, shift M to bring up the actual shape builder tool and then select it. And then this right here will be like completely garbage to me. So I can just click on it, press delete. And I'll just move this thing over, and that way I know for sure that this angle right here is perfectly following this angle right here as well. It'll be pleasing to the eye, it'll be really nice, it'll be nicely cut, and it'll look pretty good. Now, I also kind of want to have it so that it kind of lines up with this right here. That's where rulers can come in, right? I can just like put my ruler in there and make sure that this is followed on that ruler line, yada, yada, yada. It'll be in your group right here as guides, and you can get rid of it just like so. But that is perfect, that's what I want. Now I said I said I want to add an E, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. E's are pretty easy for me. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw these on right here. Throw this on right here. And last but not least, throw another one on right there. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply make my own shape with the pen tool here. Kind of like a triangle so I can get this nice little diagonal. I'm going to follow this diagonal here because what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all those things I just did. And then delete along the side right here so I have a nice cool cut going through. Now, if I want to get more creative, why not just kind of like pull this shape out a little bit? What if I just shape build a tool, select this shape because I don't want this extent. I don't want all this like stuff over here. I just want this little shape here. Click on that. It'll make that nice little shape. Now, I can take these two points here. And move them a little forward like so or maybe like move this over even like this maybe move these in a little bit more or no just this maybe move these two things in a little bit more if i need to get rid of that like you just saw get rid of it just like so and then maybe like pull this out even more and then kind of like have a little more fun with it right so there we kind of go i kind of have exactly what i want so i have the nk where the n is right here the k is right here and then the E is also in there somewhere. I can probably might line this up like on this edge here. So it's a little more, more pleasant to the eye maybe, right? So it's, it's fun, right? It's really cool. It's really awesome. It's really simple to do as long as you kind of figure out a little bit of ahead of time what you kind of want to do. As you can see, I literally just took my idea that I had over here, the N and K. And this is that little line right here, of course, right? The end's located like right here, of course. And then there's the K as well that you guys saw suggested that's right here. So in the end, all this little finalization stuff that you can do is actually pretty cool. Um, there's one thing everyone loves to do is of course round their edges. People love rounded edges. Not everyone loves these sharp corners like this. People wanna have like a nice rounded edge that kind of suggests doing something like, uh, let's make this, uh, not that color, I need a, uh, stroke color kind of suggests doing like this right so kind of does that nice little curve which looks really good all the time for me I love doing it myself and the way you're gonna do that is I do have a new layer here I'm on a new layer it doesn't really matter if you are on one or not however the one you want to do is you want to use the ellipse tool which is L on your keyboard and you pretty much want to make a nice circle let's make sure that it's a fill take this nice little circle here and then with this circle depending on if it's like an ellipse or more of an ellipse shape or whatever depending on you know your circle shape i'll make it a little bit more of an ellipse kind of a shape not perfectly circular and then what you basically want to do is you kind of like have to see these little this little green line here suggests the outside stroke the outside edge of the actual shape and you want to make sure those touch the outside shapes of this shape right here so this shape right here needs to be touched as it you can zoom in a little more it's not really touching it's touching now and then over here, it's touching maybe a little bit too much. So maybe kind of make sure you kind of fix that a little bit. And then fix this a little bit. Right? And then make sure this is still touching. And then basically what happens is if it's not touching, you'll see from when you use your shape builder tool again. So I'm going to select all of it. So I'm just going to kind of highlight this area right here. So it selects all the shapes uh, that are involved. Shift M on my keyboard. And you can see everything is touching perfectly. Now let's just suggest or make a complete mistake on purpose saying that this edge wasn't touching. Or this edge wasn't touching either, but I'll make this edge touch, not the, not the top uh, edge. But if I, I did that, and if I use the Shape Builder tool, this is touching, this is touching. But now, if I try to get rid of this, it'll get rid of this entire shape because this circle is not touching on the edge. But now that I'm going to go back and make sure I had it touching, I can just delete them just like so. And now I have a nice, awesome, cool, sh not no longer sharp corner. And it's actually just a nice, simple, uh, rounded corner. And you can pretty much go through it the entire way. I'm um, just like so I'm gonna kind of do this a little a little more rougher however you get the point right and you can see you have nice little rounded edges now so you can do this through the entire like the entire thing the entire project you can do that um so kind of like yeah also when you're done with the entire thing if you guys want to and you like see like you can see of course there's a whole bunch of different shapes within this actual design if you want to move this one kind of like this little part right here because this is all connected you can't do that unless what I, what I would suggest you would do is you would take where your group is. This is the entire stuff right here. Take this group, hold alt, drag it up just like so. It'll make a duplicate of the entire layer. So you're going to have two of the same exact thing. You can lock this uh, lock this up, call it your backup. And what you're going to do with this actual layer, you can get rid of the shape as well. You can just basically select the entire canvas or the entire actual project. Bring your Pathfinder up, which is located in Windows Pathfinder. And then go to where your Pathfinder is, Shape Modes. The first one says Unite, if you guys can suggest what happens next. If you press this button, it unites all the different paths together. And if you just drop this down, you're going to see it's all in one nice group besides the other, this and this right here, right? So this entire thing now is that entire group right there. So 
if I want to now, if I want to move this, I could, or if I want to recolor just this NKE part, I can go ahead and just kind of click and recolor that and have two separate colors. Kind of have like a, what is it called? A, uh, uh, uh anat anat anatomy, anon, what is the word called when there's like something, like everything's the same besides that one thing, an anatomy, anon, dude, what is it called? An, an, an anonymy. It's an anonymy. Something like that. I don't know, but basically that is a tutorial for today. Hopefully you guys understood everything. Hopefully I gave enough tips for you guys to go ahead and create your own cool text logos. And as always, guys, Twitter likes on the video equals a secret down below. I have no clue what the secret download is. If you guys want the, the AI file to this, just let me know. Of course, do not forget to follow me on Twitter at SysOHQ. Do not forget to subscribe if you guys haven't already. And of course, check out my Selfie, selfie.com slash SysOHQ. For any pre and packs as low as three bucks. Thank you guys so freaking much. And uh, talk to you guys later. So that's what you out. Peace. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys, even though it's freaking snowing outside. Later.